So what's going on guys, my name is Mr. Dalek JD, and in this video I'm going to be giving you a guide to the Blood of the Dead main easter egg quest. This is an absolutely fantastic easter egg and the ending is definitely worth the hard work. I'd love to know down below in the comments section if you found this guide useful and it got you the easter egg and if you need to find some players on PSN, Xbox Live or Battle.net then I suggest you use the comments section as a way for you to find some players. So just put your name in there and see if you can get some teammates as I do advise you to do this easter egg to rake in two or more players. Solo is going to be one of the most impossible zombies easter eggs to complete so I definitely don't recommend it. Before we jump into the steps, if you guys do find this guide useful, I'd really appreciate if you logged into a YouTube channel to just simply click that thumbs up button before you leave if you found this video useful or interesting. It'd really appreciate all the hours I've spent for you to get this really good guide. But anyway, before starting the game there is no real need for you to have any specific loadouts on but I would highly recommend that you use Takio's Katana for the level 3 special weapon because it will save your life. And the standard elixir setups that you guys would normally use, just go ahead and run those. Jumping straight into the game, there's going to be a few things that you're going to need to know as well whilst you're doing this easter egg and that involves some of the specific quests which include parts for building the shield, how to get the hell's retriever, as well as parts for building the acid gat kit on how to get an upgraded shield. I'll mention all of this during the video but if at any point you need additional help then you can open up the description and find everything you need down there. But the very first step we need is to power on the map so you have all the locations available as playable spaces as well as building the spectral shield. Now, if I you don't know how to build sure that, then I will have a correct. guide for it down Maybe below in the description. It's very simple and the parts for it are always going to be in the same place. But if you do know how to build the shield, then of course we can move on to the next part of step one, which is to open up to the rooftop and you want to get three souls absorbed with your shield key by having your shield out with left bumper and using your right trigger to kill the zombies by sucking their souls. Once you've got three souls your key is going to be glistening blue and then you can use your left trigger and also your right to do a shield essence blast and you're going to want to blast the vault switch on the roof here which is going to bring the pack-a-punch machine. Now that we've gotten that done we can move on to the second step which is shock and denial and in order for you to progress to get to this step you're going to need to obtain the spoon. You don't need the golden spork you just need the standard spoon and if you don't know how to get that then again it will be linked down below in the description but it's a very simple quest of using your shield in the warden's office at specific pillars to find three different numbers entering that down below into the citadel tunnels and then getting it from the docks but once you've obtained the spoon you want to go to the warden's house and knife the wall on the left upstairs once you've gotten this it is now time for you to gear up as you're going to have to progress through a lot of rounds specifically we need to get to round 17 this is because brutus will have a new attack which is going to be a slam electric attack which you're going to need for this step so i highly advise during these moments between these rounds between wherever you are and round 17 to get geared up. You don't need to get the golden spork and you don't need the hell's redeemer. You just need the hell's retriever. But I would recommend during this that you get the blunder gat. There is a easter egg to get a free one and you can get it from the mystery box but I highly recommend all players in your game get the blunder gat. You'll also want to convert that into the magma gat and if you don't know how to do that then I'll have a link down below in the description but it's essentially the best weapon that you can use in the game to kill absolutely any Anything regardless of what round. I would also recommend that during this time you go and get the upgraded shield. Now if you don't know how to get the upgraded shield you simply need to hit the mystery box until you get a padlock which means the box is moving and whilst the padlock is showing instantly get your shield out, drain the energy from that padlock using your key and then once the actual keyhole has turned blue throw your retriever at it and you'll now have an upgraded shield. This is essential for some of the easter egg steps and it will also make your life a lot easier as this shield can hold four charges rather than the normal two from the normal shield. I'd also recommend that whilst you have the upgraded shield and you get into round 17 you're gonna have a lot of dogs spawn and I'd want you to use this behavior to get your shield out during when dogs spawn and use the key to drain the souls from them as this drains very quick compared to killing a zombie via the key and that way you will always have some charges saved up because we're gonna be using a heck of a lot of them during this easter egg. But now we've got 
to round 17 plus, what you need to do is have a Brutus spawn into the map. You can have that by just one spawning in, or you can spawn one into the map using a special code in the Citadel Tunnels, which is 666. You can only do this once a game, but once you do use this, it will spawn in a Brutus, and this is a guaranteed way of being able to start the Easter egg steps from round 17. By dragging Brutus upstairs in the house and him EMP slamming you by the wall that we scratched with the spoon, it's going to open up the Warden's Ritual Room. And once we're inside, you want to activate the lever next to the electric chair and also pick up this red orb that's on the table. You're then going to see this incredible effect where the wall is going to crumble, revealing the lighthouse and also showing you a dead body in the electric chair, which was actually originally the Warden. This room's going to become quite familiar to you as we're going to be visiting quite a lot during this easter egg but with that red orb that you picked up you want to make your way to the spawn room and place the red orb onto the map in the very first spawn room once that's placed down you'll notice that by the zombies window there is going to be the chronorium you simply want to interact with it and a blue bird will appear picking up the chronorium and it's going to fly away and the bird is going to be hiding somewhere on the map and we're going to have to repeat a process of finding that bird for four consecutive rounds starting with the round where you initially interacted with the chronorium and the bird flew away at this point everyone in your game should have the upgraded shield because then it just makes your life a lot easier as you'll have the whole four different charges but basically we are going to be looking around for this bird it moves every round and can only be shocked once per round now there are a endless amount of spawns for this bird and my best advice is to listen Listen and run around the map until you hear the sound of this bird. It's going to make a very significant chirping, almost seagull-like noise where the bird will be somewhere in the area you're in because you'll be able to hear it. And you have to use the afterlife shield and look at it with the left trigger in order to physically see the bird. And once you see it, then you can shoot it. Once you've found the bird and shot it, you then need to move to the next round and repeat this process until you've shot on three birds on three different rounds now on your screen I'm gonna have a text of every single possible location of the following location so like I said there is a ton I physically can't show you all of them in this video because I simply haven't gotten all of these spawns in the multiple games I've ran but as you can see these are just some of the spawns second floor of the new spawn in a window new industries up into the left as you enter the spawn power mystery box room that's gonna be on a pipe on top of the truck in the west grounds on top of the the catwalk and that's going to be on the door entrance where you normally open it with the power once you've turned that on and initially start the catwalk phase it's going to be up there there's also going to be one in the recreation yard on a pillar there's going to be one on weasel's hat above the entrance of the cafeteria and the library on top of the radio shelf there's going to be one on the lighthouse which you can see from outside the warden's office there's going to be one on the monkey bomb statue which is the cell block below the wolf head there's going to be one where electric cherry used to be which is this vault switch you can zap which is on the third floor of the cell blocks there's the vault meter on michigan avenue opposite to the warden's office there's one outside the warden's office on the corner of the balcony there's the warden's office doorway there's the warden's office on top of the fireplace there's one in the first room of the citadel going down the stairs from warden's office there's one in the citadel on the sandbags on the number pad in the citadel tunnels above the hanging body through the door to the right of the number pad bottom of citadel tunnels in the walkway alongside the power room near the barrier to the left which is facing the power room there's one in the old jug location which is the docks perk machine there's going to be one on the washing machine in the showers above the door to the roof and finally there's going to be one in the infirmary Whew. so once you've found three birds we're now going to move on to the next step and you should be on your fourth round of finding the bird but this time it's going to be a little bit different you're going to be looking around the map to find this bird again in afterlife but when you're not looking afterlife you're going to be seeing a blue glow somewhere around the map you will also hear the bird again and when you physically look at this bird without being an afterlife or while you're in afterlife you're gonna hear the warden crying which means you are looking directly at the bird now for this step to work we're going to need to get a specific drop from the citadel tunnels number machine and this is going to be a zombie blood so once you've located exactly where this bird is 
going to be and these locations are all very close to where you spawn in the zombies blood as it wouldn't be fair for you to run halfway around the map and have your zombie blood run out but i would also recommend using a elixir called temporal gift at this point as it will make power-ups last longer and you'll have a whole minute of zombies blood if you're attempting this on solo this is definitely going to be very very useful but once you've entered zombies blood you want to run to the location and then use your shield with left trigger so you can see the bird and then you need to simply throw the hell's retriever at the bird and this is going to drop the chronorium now if you fail to find the bird and you do this whilst in the zombies blood you might notice the bird will fly away or you simply won't get the chronorium you're going to have to end the round and try again by getting another zombies blood when you've eventually found the location for this bird it can be a little bit tricky and a little bit annoying but hang in there keep the round going as you don't really want to be burning through rounds because this easter egg as you already know involves you getting into the fairly high rounds but once you have found this bird you want to pick up the chronorium that it drops and then go to the warden's ritual room that we opened via the warden's emp slam and place the book onto the dead warden which is now going to begin the next step called anger and bargaining and you're going to notice the chronorium pages are going to be going crazy and you need to interact with the chronorium to stop the pages and then using your shield left trigger will reveal a three digit number you then need to enter that number into the citadel tunnels number pad and this is going to start one of five challenges which makes up the majority of this easter egg so these challenges can begin at random you might be getting one which i'm not showing you to start off first in this video but it doesn't matter as you're eventually going to go through all of these challenges one by one once you've inputted the number you can make your way to the warden's office and then go outside on eagle plaza and you can look up at the lighthouse and you can see See what direction the lighthouse is shining as it's going to be shining a light somewhere on the map it's going to be a red beam and you're going to walk into any of these areas and eventually find where it's aiming at and using your afterlife shield you need to aim in and then use a shield blast in order to get this portal to appear but once you've got the portal to appear we can start with the first of the five challenges and again you might get this in a different order in your game to us but this is what happened for us now if the lighthouse is pointing towards the docks you want to come down to the docks and you're going to want to use a shield blast to reveal the portal which is going to be right here in front of this mystery box location this is going to start a easter egg challenge where we have to go towards the warden's office now make your way into the warden's office and in this small room here you're going to find this small machine and the way the sequence works is we are trying to get a correct sequence of morse code which is a mixture of both dots and dashes dots are simulated here as a quick press of the button and a dash is considered as a long hold of the button which i could consider you holding for three seconds now instead of referring to this as morse code we're going to refer to this simply as short and long and by pressing the button for a mere second, that's going to be classed as a short input. And if you hold down the button for about three seconds, that's going to be classed as a long input. And essentially what we're trying to do here is a trial and error of working out what this sequence is. Now this sequence can end up being as short as six or as long as 10 different inputs of both short and long. So when I say it's a trial and error, simply go up to this and perhaps try holding it for three seconds to input a long and if you hear a laugh then that means that the input isn't correct and you're gonna have to restart again but if you don't get a laugh whilst continuing to input different shorts and longs then you're clearly getting the sequence right the aim here is to put in as many sequences as you can without the warden laughing resetting your progress now i believe there's only a finite number of different input sequences that you can have in the game but but I've still not worked out all of them but for our particular game I'm showing you it on screen right now I got incredibly lucky in guessing this one straight off the bat but as you can see we're going to play you this really really easily so that you can ex understand exactly what's going on here so our code ended up being a short then it was a long followed by another long then a third long then a fourth long then a short, then another short, then another short, then one more short, and ending it with long. Hey, when you have the sequence right. right, your character will make a quote saying that that was correct. 
Honestly, this takes a little bit of trial and error, but once you've gotten this down, you can easily just keep doing this until you've got it. And I highly recommend that you write down your order on your piece of paper or on a phone or a document or something like that, just so you can keep a mental note of what your sequence is that you've gotten right so far. And you simply keep re-inputting your sequence and then trying another different input. And then if it's correct and you don't hear a laugh, then clearly that sequence is right. And you keep going until you have completely done it and you will have your character with a quote and then we can go on to the next step. So what you want to do is run up towards the gondola here and aim with your afterlife shield out towards the water and you'll see a ghost boat. From here what you need to do is kill a zombie by the skeleton on this hospital bed in the infirmary. It's going to spawn a ghost in afterlife and you can only see that ghost with your afterlife shield out and you're going to need to shield blast it to spawn it back into reality from there you're going to need to kill about five to ten zombies before this thing is going to start following one of the players in the game and you need to basically bring this zombie all the way from the infirmary to the gondola by the gondola and have it ride with you and then follow it down all the way to the portal we created at the docks and once you've done that you will notice that the boat will disappear, the ghost will disappear, and he will have dropped an orb down on the ground. And it's very important that after each challenge you complete, you pick up that orb and you bring it back to the map in spawn and place it on there. That's a mandatory behavior step you need to do for every challenge that you complete. Once you have put the red orb back onto the map, you then need to go back into the warden's office and you'll notice the Cronorium will be spinning pages like crazy. And then we can stop that by interacting interacting with it and it's going to give us a brand new number which we input into the citadel tunnels and then we can get another challenge every time you complete a challenge you're going to have to go back to the warden's ritual room and then stop the chronorium pages to get yourself another code to put in so just bear that in mind now we're going to move on to the second challenge which again you might not get straight away but we're going to showcase it anyway so once you get onto it you'll know what to do and this in my opinion is the hardest or probably one of two of the hardest challenges that you have to complete within this easter egg if the lighthouse is beaming into the spawn powerhouse what you want to do is with your shield aim towards that red beam and shield blast it using the souls you've collected from zombies into it and it's going to spawn a portal it's going to spawn a spirit which is going to be using the levers by the power switch here you need to shield blast that zombie and then head down to the docks and into the east side power room in the corner of the room there's going to be a sparking generator and as soon as you interact with that generator the lights in the power room will shut off and a simon says game will start there's going to be five rounds of simon says starting with simply one of these generators flashing and what's great about this step as well is that not only do you have a visual aid of the lights so you know which generator to go for but it also makes a loud noise and the proximity audio in this game allows you to work out where it is basically from using the audio as well as visually so if it's really loud then it's obviously very close to you and if it's not as loud then you might need to go to the other side of the room now you can do this on your own but in this game I've done it in two player where I dedicated one of the other players to have their own set of generators as their own specific ones to hit and mine on the other side being my own but there's going to be five rounds one starting with just one generator which is going to light up you need to match then it's going to be two that are going to light up you need to match then three then four then the final one being five now there are sometimes a simon says step where you might have a generator that will blink more than once which is going to make your life a lot easier if you do get it because by the time you get to the fifth one honestly it is going to be a little bit confusing and i must also bear in mind and warn you guys that for some reason during this step even if you're keeping someone with a zombie somewhere else zombies start spawning during this i think this is a way of try out putting you off getting this correct by making your concentration for off from getting the actual generator steps done properly but just try and ignore them or just try and shoot them as quickly as you can while still concentrating but once you've gone and done the five rounds of simon says it's been cleared the lights will turn on and will remain on above three of the electrical machines now you need to remember the machines that have these three bulbs lit up on the electrical machines these are only going to be on the generators that have these weird paper symbols underneath them you need to be very very 
careful that you remember the machines that blinked with lights because you only have about five seconds to see which machine had the lights lit up before the, all the lights in the room slowly turn back on. This is essential because if you don't get this, then you can't finish this challenge. And if you didn't catch it, you're going to have to fail the challenge by just going to the next round and getting a new challenge from the book. But these are all the symbols that you can find in the room and the generators and what they look like. So there's going to be about five or six of these different symbols. You're going to need to have noted the three machines that blinked for five seconds and you're going to need to note the actual symbol that they had. So if you have a capture card, for example, or even just with your phone or something, take a photo of the three symbols that lit up as we're going to need them. But also, if you go into the middle of the room, there is a shelf with a bunch of candles and there's a punch card on the shelf that you're going to need to pick up. You're going to take this punch card to the room above spawn with a bunch of of green monitors in it. Simply insert the card into this Gorard Crovy style computer in the corner of the room and it's going to light up all the green monitors in the room. These monitors will match the three symbols that we found in the original power room but there's also going to be a few symbols which you might not recognize and if you don't recognize them then do not worry. We're just going to be looking for the three symbols that we found in our power room down at the docks. Now go up to one of the monitors and see if you can see one of the symbols that you had down at the docks power room. If you do, then press square and the monitor is going to change to show you a different symbol. Now each monitor will have two symbols in total and it will show two symbols one at a time, but it will switch when you interact with it. The two symbols on a single screen means that those symbols match with each other. So we're looking for the three symbols that we had down at the docks. You find the monitor and then you interact with it to show you a different symbol. Now we're going to do this one at a time just to make this a bit easier. I'm going to have to do this one at a time anyway. But once you've found a monitor with a symbol that you had down at the docks, switch it to the other one and memorize what this symbol looks like. You now want to make your way to the first power room which you turn on at the start of the map. We're going to be looking for the symbol that we just managed to get from the monitor which matches the one at the docks. Once you've found the correct symbol, using your shield enter the spectral mode by holding left trigger and watch the ghost as it tries to pull different switches. When he tries to pull the switch with the correct symbol above it which you're looking for, which you're matching with the green monitor, shoot him with a spirit blast and he will now be visible with without the shield and if successful he will pull the switch's lever. You then need to go back to the spawn room, go back to the spawn room and interact with the other monitors until you find the two other symbols which were down at the docks which we got earlier and once you found the other symbol for it go back to power room and repeat the same process again. Go into the spectral vision of the afterlife with your shield, wait until the ghost is hovering over the lever with the symbol you are looking to match it up with, shoot it with a shield essence and it's going to pull the lever. And then you want to repeat that one more time and when it's done you will know it's because you'll get a voice quote to show it's been completed successfully and the red orb is going to appear on the ground in front of the last switch that was pulled. You can now have a massive sigh of relief because that's probably one of the hardest challenges out of all of them to complete. So give yourself a pat on the back and we can go on to the next ones. Now once you've picked up the orb and placed it on the map you want to go back to the Warden's Ritual room and interact with the Cronorium to get you another code. Input that in the Citadel tunnels and check for where the lighthouse is shining now. Now if it's shining in the showers, it's going to be a fun little one which all players in the game have to be present in the showers for. But once you've shield blasted the beam of light coming from the lighthouse, it's going to reveal a portal and you're going to see a spirit playing the banjo. He's really trying to impress you so he plays this for quite a bit before he stops and holds his banjo out for you to be able to pick up. Once you've picked up the banjo, you're going to need to run into a blue ring that's going to be somewhere in the room. You're going to want to stand in the blue ring and kill enemies to collect souls. It will keep moving all around the area until it's filled up completely with souls as you'll get a quote from your character as well as there not being any more blue rings. If for whatever reason the portal has suddenly disappeared, then you have failed this step and you can fail the step by the player with 
with the banjo going down. So just try not to do that. But if completed successfully, you should be able to give the banjo back to the spirit and he will go away and give you an orb, which you can then place on the map in spawn. And then we can go to the warden's ritual room, stop the chronorium, get another code, put it in the citadel tunnels, and we can spawn in another challenge. Now for this challenge, I want to reassure you guys that you are constantly getting your shield up to four fully charged shots with your shield and also making sure you're topping up your shield throughout the game you don't want it being destroyed because if it does then you're going to lose all of the charged souls that you've collected so far so keep checking that you don't have a shield that's near breaking point and go back and buy a brand new one but for this one we're going to need a lot of shield blasts okay i'm talking minimum of eight between 8 and 12 so I would recommend all players in your game to at least have four because that way we can guarantee to get this step in one go without failing it but but for this challenge this is going to associate with the lighthouse beaming a beam of light into the new industries building you're going to see a small red gleam of light and you want to aim with your shield and shield blast it to reveal the portal now to start this challenge you need to head into the library of the prison and you're going to want to kill a zombie around here what this is going to do is in afterlife you'll now be able to see a ghost and you want to spawn it in by simply using the shield blast on him now he's going to take a route around the map where he's going to pick up a dangerous weapon in the cell blocks and make his way slowly over to the new industries building to stab another spirit and we are going to stop him and here is the best tactics on how to do so. So what you need to do is you need to be using your key to drain all the energy out of him and this is the key point. You need to do this enough so that he becomes fully red, your key no longer will do any damage to him and that he is fully red and now not in afterlife but the way this step works is you need to shield blast him and use the key to drain the energy from him so he eventually turns red he's gonna continuously vanish and when he does you need to shield blast him again and then use the key on him again this is why i just reassure you guys at this step you have a ton of shield blasts ready and as you can see here there is a really easy tactic to slow down his movement around the map by standing in front of him if you stand in front of him you're actually going to stop him from moving and you can get a player to basically pause him's movement so that you have a lot more time to get your shield blasts here i had my friend with four whole shield blasts and i had three and as you can see the zombie still isn't fully red yet but the aim of this is to get him fully red so that he is no longer visible in afterlife and is visible in the reality as well and you then simply want to let him go on his journey into the new industries building but once he eventually makes his way and he's about to enter the new industries building through this door you need to turn the trap on so that he dies and you save the other ghost if he's fully red and he walks into the trap he will die and you will have completed this step correctly if he walks through the trap he's obviously going to stab the other spirit and that's failed and you're gonna have to go to the next round to get yourself a new challenge but hopefully following this guide you should have gotten that correct and once he dies you're gonna notice that the orb is going to spawn beside the trap so you're going to wait until the trap has stopped spinning pick up that red orb place it onto the map in the spawn room then we can go to the warden's office use the chronorium and interact with it stop the pages use the shield to get a brand new code and then input that into the citadel tunnels i'm now going to work on the last and final one which is a really cool and easy one now if the lighthouse light is shining outside of the warden's office in michigan avenue you want to use your shield and blast it so that it appears the portal and what you need to do here is kill a zombie in the cafeteria once all players are in the cafeteria in the afterlife mode of your shield you will then see a spirit floating about and you want to shield blast him to bring him into our reality it's now going to bring on a lockdown sequence of sorts where you're going to have to escort this guy across from the cafeteria along inside the old mob of the dead spawn 
up through the second floor of the cell block and towards the portal in Michigan Avenue. It's going to spawn a load of zombies and you can also see a ton of different spirit ghosts along the way that are helping him and aiding him on his journey. But this has some very specific zombie spawns where you're going to get an entire train of zombies spawning through one window, some just coming out of nowhere and there's going to be a Brutus that spawns once you cross the second floor of the cell block. So just bear that in mind. Definitely have your specialist ready as well. I'd also advise that at mo this point, you should really have your specialist up to level 3. And if not, using the Magma Gat will definitely help you really get your specialist unlocked very, very quickly. Now, the aim as well is for him to not take damage as the zombies are going to be attracted to him. And if he takes too much damage, you'll notice the more damage he gets, the more red his body becomes. This is not what we want. We want you to escort him safely all the way into the portal. And once that is done, you've done all five challenges. But just remember, if at any point you failed a challenge, a failed portal trial will require you to go back to the warden's ritual room in his house and get a new code of the Cronorium and input that again in the Citadel tunnels to respawn the failed portal on the map. But note that this only makes you redo the one you failed. It doesn't make you redo any successfully completed trials, thankfully. Once all the portals are complete and you've placed all the red gems in the map at the spawn, you now want to get yourself boss fight ready. And at this point, make sure you've got all the perks that you have set on. On. Make sure you've got fully pack-a-punch guns. This is where you want the magma get upgraded and in this game I used the vapor which was quad packed which gives you a double pack-a-punch effect and also increases the damage And I would recommend you take brain rot in just so it helps you kill off some of the zombies in the boss fight But once you're all ready make sure you have a shield I cannot stress how important it is that you cannot complete this boss fight without having a shield So make sure all players have a fresh shield before starting this boss fight but once you're ready head to the warden's house and all players must stand by the electrocuted warden so that there's an electrical beam from all players to the warden this will cause a summoning key to show up above the book and a cutscene will play which will lead you to be locked in a jail cell now i won't play the entire cutscene because it does last about five to six minutes but i will give you the gist of it here so that you can experience this amazing part of the story everything will be wonderful So eventually the blue bird will set free from the cell and it will open it so that you can get out of those jail cells. And it's now going to be a little bit of a small, quiet stealth mission. Once you've gotten out of the cell, you're going to notice by the bird it's going to have a bag where you can pick up all of the items that you just had on you before entering into this area. You're going to pick up your weapons, you're going to pick up your shield and all your perks as well. You're then going to want to follow the bird out of the prison and just before you get out of the old prison, you're going to see a warden spawn that you're going to want to obviously kill. From then, the bird is going to make a journey across from the entrance to the prison along the catwalk and then eventually towards the spawn area. But before that, you're going to notice that a warden outside of spawn will grow in size and then Sal, Finn and Al's ghosts will start to attack him. After he flies off into the sky, you want to pick up the orb that he has dropped on the floor and place it in the map in the spawn room. Once that's done, the map will burn, showing a cryopod chamber hiding behind it. The door to the right of this in the spawn room 
will now open and all players must go upstairs and each player stand on a dimmed light to make them light up. Once that's happened, you'll get a prompt on your screen which will say press X or square to enter the door and go to the boss fight. We're now in the boss fight and things are incredible. I would advise each player to have their own specific part of this playable space so they can train up zombies and dogs and at this point I'd really advise you using your shield key to get the souls from the dogs as we are going to need a few shield blasts during this different boss fight here. So you're going to have to wipe out all of the zombies, the wardens and the dogs that are here but make sure that you have shield blasts and of course that your shield is not broken at this point. You don't want the shield to break at any point otherwise it will render you absolutely impossible to do this easter egg but once you've killed off all of the different zombies and the wardens you're going to notice that the main big warden is going to spawn on a pillar and what you need to do is go inside of this little shield bubble that he's in and you need to blast the orbs that are above him which are going to break and then you need to shield blast the boss once the boss has been shield blasted, you then need to shield blast the orb on top of the machine in the middle of the map. I'm going to repeat this process for three times throughout this, so you're going to be want to be continuously bringing out your shield to get the dog souls, and you're going to be killing the wardens and the zombies as well. But at this point, there's going to be some specific logos on the ground which are going to hurt you if you stand on them, so just be aware to avoid them. And there's also going to be some gas areas, I think, around those symbols as well that are going to hurt you. Once we've repeated this for three times, on the third time, Richtofen will then need to sit in the chair in the middle of the boss fight room. Whoever's playing as Richtofen is then going to get this cutscene. We take the scene. What we do now? Now, gentlemen, I do the right thing. Stand back, you imbeciles! You want mine blood? Take mine blood! Ah! He jumped inside! Have you lost German mind? Help me get him out! With this fire gem in your hand, the player who's playing as Richtofen has to make his way back to the door to the boss room by killing all the zombies and standing on the dim light. We then need to go ahead and wipe out all of the remaining warden zombies and dogs whilst the player playing as Richtofen goes up to the Richtofen chamber and holds square and that, my friends, will complete the entire easter egg of Blood of the Dead. I really hope you guys enjoyed this guide and you found it informative. If you did, I would really appreciate if you guys left a like rating before you head out of this video. And if you enjoyed this and you want to see more videos like this, then please feel free to hit that subscribe button down below. I've got guides on the channel for Voyage of Despair as well as Nine, and very soon after watching this, more than likely a guide on Classified. And there's a big playlist link down below in the description which you guys can open and watch all of my videos. But if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more content like this then feel free to subscribe and click the notification bell but thank you very much for watching it's been a pleasure to give you this guide and i'll catch you on another one very very soon